Welcome to another Smoke Box. I'm Be Real for Be Real TV, also known as Dr. Green Thumb. I got a very special guest in the box, legendary spitter, my man, Raz Kaz. It's rap pugilism when I be placing 208 bones in one zone with microphones. I'm like the Blade Runner hunting clone, Shimon. I beat it like one glove in a bad nose job with more breathing techniques than Lamas. Raz still be drinking more liquor brews and continues the liquidation to cruise with a drunken technique like Shundin's Kung Fu and Virtual Fighter 2. See me, son, I'm the one sporting Dolce and Gabbana. Pillin' this sucker's wig back like Cradle Cap. You ain't no cap pillar for real and for who you desire to kill, you need more God than Zilla. I'm born spitter, embrace of the boa constrictor. Convict philosophies with break down Richter. I'm quick to split atoms and anatomically double. So for a nigga to bubble, it's twice the trouble. I gotta walk water, who walk me down the street with a muzzle. This the new tunnel banger to thug to. And if money is the root of evil, then beat the devil. I want a kryptonite rolly with Bill Gates on the bezel. Now take it how you wanna take Woo. it. A West Sider, sport white t-shirts with creased up guests Sometimes sagging and I sport guests Now imagine, the Minotaur out the labyrinth What's up, B? Representing, man I'm long overdue Long overdue Ready You know, and we're smoking some gas from Dr. Green Thumbs <laughs> on some funky field tips as always I'm so nervous <laughs> I'm a pro, man <laughs> <laughs> See, my eyes will be laughing at me, bro I gotta tell you, though, man, you know, like there's always been a lot of love for you out there because I'll tell you, motherfuckers, they, they, they don't know you as a smoker. They more know you as, as a, you know, drinking yeah. and shit, but they'll still throw your name in the suggestion to have you in the box. You know what it is? I used to smoke beanies, so yeah. everybody thought I was, was smoking blunt, joints. Blunt. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. I would yeah. see you smoking beanies when we, when we was doing the club scene as younger, mm -hmm. younger rappers do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You you always was holding a beady, beady so, boy. Yeah. You smoke beaties too, be real. No, no. I, I didn't smoke beaties. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, I smoked blunts. Believe it or not, wow, blunts. Interesting. But I gotta tell you, man, you're 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 one of the most revered, you know, rappers out there, especially amongst the West Coast contingency of rappers. Because Thank I you. mean, your bar work is fucking unprecedented, mm. my bro. It's uh, here, here. you know. You know how back in the day there was the whole the East Coast got lyrics, the West don't. So I always felt like, for me, that was something I wanted to represent. That was know. like a fuel to the fire. Yeah, thing. I just wanted to make sure that East Coast MCs knew we got West Coast lyricists. And I'm not the only one, but yeah. I wanted that to be something that, at least in, in debates and thanks to, you know, thanks to the Wake Up Show and all the yeah. other platforms and Unity, I, I was able to showcase that, so. Yeah, I mean, because you put it on your shoulders for a time, I mean, you know, because, you know, for a time, it, you to get off in, in the West Coast as a as an artist, for a West Coast label to sign you, you sort of had to ride that gangster fucking right. line right. to get a proper deal and everything right. else was experimental, you yeah. know what I mean? So. Most motherfuckers was right in the line of that. Right. A lot of people was riding against the wave, especially in L.A. But you know what? People opening doors. I think uh, Freestyle Fellowship. Yes. Um, you know, Far Side. Far Side, yeah. So, you know, people were trying to create that alternative lane. Yeah. Um, Amad, too, back in the day. You know, whatever. So, um, we just, when I say we, I say people like me and Exhibit. And, right. You know, and Sophia, you know, like... We kind of took where Hyro left off, you know, yes. not that they left off, but when they opened that door, we kind of ran through it. Yeah, I, I agree, though, because that that get, that gave a little something different from the West Coast than people were expecting. Right. Because, I mean, you know, it, it was almost like a fucking label. If you're a West Coast artist, you didn't get so much love out there in the Midwest, in the South on radio. Right. Because of the gangster shit. Right. But when you guys started opening it up with, with the lyricism in different concepts and different content, it made people look at Cali, you know. A, a little bit way. differently. Yeah. And, and and the good thing is that they both went hand in hand because I always said, you know, Cypress Hill was still hip hop. Right. I mean, it still was gangster shit. Um, but the platform, honestly, the production was still hip hop. Right. To me, you know. Yeah. And then I always said if you, you know, you you put a, a, a DJ Premier beat on... On, on E40 yeah. or Woo! Dub C, and Stupid. that's a lyrical record. Yeah. And then niggas like J.L. Felony, too. He's a lyricist. So yeah. it's, we've always had the lyric. I mean, NWA, everybody. It's so many lyrical MCs. It's just 
I think people perceive it based on the perce- on the production. I, I think I think that's a, a great example. I mean, you know, because you can go even to where you know Ice Cube did the his one of his albums with the Bomb Squad, right? And that shit was incredible. America's Most Wanted. Yeah, and that yeah. shit was incredible. And then, you know, even Mugs with MC8. Exactly. And even Premiere with MC8. Exactly. I mean, it just, it opens up a different level and right. people start looking at West Coast rappers differently. And the bars is the same bars. Yeah. And it's still gangster, but then you realize that, no, dude got patterns. He's saying shit. <laughs> he got a style. Um, I think a lot of times we just... we. We should be a little more inclusive. I know labels tried to make that separation, but I was already, you know, I, I grew up here, so I'm a fan of West Coast rap just as much as I'm a fan of where rap started, which would be the East Coast. Right. Um, my whole thing was always, you know, what are you telling me and can you say it dope? Right. And so no matter where you were from, East or West, I was only, I was listening for that. Yeah. You know, shit. I see was saying gangster shit six in the morning, but then so was honestly, the, uh, Schoolie D, Schoolie D, and, and all of them. Yeah. It was still gangster it rap. It was just different, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. It was different. You know what? Because it, it's crazy. Because it is. You know, you, you hear these different forms of the gangster rap in the different regions and, and right. how they fucking ran it. And a lot of times, it's different because you know the slang is different. Slang is in the production style is different. And the production style is different. Ours was laid back, so you know we yeah, had the Cali for shit a long time. Yeah, yeah. and but, I mean, think about it though. We got beautiful weather. Palm trees, pretty ass bitches. What's there to be uptight about, right? right. <laughs> it is made for this. It's, it's riding smoke music. Right. Whereas New York is a lot more hectic. I always thought it was like geography kind of determines yeah. how, you know, the music that people make. Fast paced and aggressive. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the production. Yeah. I, I, I got to agree with that because, you know, you could totally tell, you know, West Coast hip hop from east coast hip-hop for a long time yeah it wasn't until you know like but i'll say this like groups like epmd they had like a what would be a west coast sound yeah mm-hmm. yeah you know definitely. early on and then biggie did that you know a little bit oh later. definitely with, with juicy and all that but that that's the flip ain't it right like so like you know we get on west east coast beats and it opens up a whole different view of what our skill set is right. and how we tell stories out here right and then hearing them on the West Coast beats opens up a different, it, it, yeah, it's a different wave. Yeah, it's, I always thought that was dope when when motherfuckers did that because it was like you know understanding, you know both both coasts both and coast. then fucking flipping it like that. Because I mean you know at, at heart with Cypress, I mean Mugs was from the East Coast, Sen and I from the West Coast, right. and we just fucking bridged both things together i think that was that was why people were confused as to where we were from did y'all have that problem i didn't know that some people thought we were from new york people thought i was from new york too i ain't gonna lie right yeah but that's cool because that you know that goes to show that that we we, were opening yeah we were out of the west coast box because there was because there was definitely a box i mean like we were saying you had to sound you know like nwa or anything close to it to get a fucking deal out here you know, and we didn't necessarily fit, fit into in that, that box. box. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's a testament to, to the work you put in because, I mean, you you know, motherfuckers like, you know how they always have that, they, they've had that phrase, your rapper's favorite rapper. rapper. That's, that's, that's <laughs> what I strive to be. Yeah. It's you, man. That's you. Thank you, brother. Like, if I could rap like that, bro. <laughs> you got bars, though. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I try. You know what I'm saying? But... That's what you, I'm you know what my problem is though. I, I'm. It's like we're in a business now that's morphed into like being good at rapping is not necessarily a good thing. Yeah, it's like too, it's too <laughs> much. Yeah, like it's too much. And, and 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 you know what? You're absolutely right because I think sometimes when um, you know, in the early stages of the new rappers coming in and and uh, our school sort of like. You know, we're still on the cusp of passing the torch, but still having it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of motherfuckers wouldn't work with each other for, for a second. And then when they did, our generation of hip hoppers would tend to over rap on the records <laughs> with them. And it goes over the heads of some right. of these motherfuckers. Too much. You know what, my, my, I would say this. This is my approach to music. I try to do what the beat tells me to do, plus I gotta be right myself. So, right. I, you know, if I get on a record that uh, whatever the, the song is, whatever the content is about, 
Like, I've never made no records about me selling dope. I never did. I say the right. homies or my cousin. Right. You know, whatever. So I try to, I mean, you can fit into any zone to, to me because I'm a writer. Fundamentally, yeah. we're all writers. Yeah. So write from your perspective about the situation. Yeah, you kept it true to yourself. Right. You know, I don't know about over, over rhyme, and I just think niggas don't read books. So niggas got like, niggas only talking like, one syllable words in 2020. Limited vocabulary. Their vocabulary is limited. This is true. And that part is not something that's, you know, just specific to rap. That's just, just specific to society. Like, yeah. we don't even talk in sentences on IG. Think about it. Yeah. LOL. FOH. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we yeah. turn it into those people in real life where yeah. we don't really... We first of all, slang is slang. Like short that's cutting. dope. We're short, but we're over. We're like short circuiting. Yeah, <laughs> like motherfuckers is dumb as fuck. Short cut, short circuit. Right. Everything yeah. we short circuiting. So I think sometimes just that vocabulary goes over the head of the casual listener, and the casual listener is trained to listen to very simplistic rap. I'm not knocking it, right. but if every you know if you're just repeating a lot of stuff, I was, I was gonna do. Yeah. I would do that. I would do that because that's like that's nursery rhymes. I'm not mad. I'm not mad if it makes for a good record, but I am. I am about the art and you know the culture of hip hop, and so I feel like if 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 I was a baseball player and I got out there and never caught nothing, never hit the ball, I don't play baseball. Yeah, this is the only like if I'm not a skater, if I'm not a, I can't be an airline like. I'm not a pilot, bro. If I get on there, we're dying. Because we're not going to get off the ground because I'm not a pilot. Right. But how is this called rap? And then it's bad to be able to rap. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, the weird thing. I think Hell it's yeah. I think it's partially perpetuated by fucking radio because, I mean, you know, they're the fucking right. ones who choose mm -hmm. what's going on to the playlist. The gatekeepers. They're the gatekeepers, right? Looking and, at it. and uh, you know, My whatever point. it is that, that flipped the game... Um, for, to, to you know flip on what what they were playing before which is more conscious driven right um records even if they were like party style or, or in between you know like on some dance shit mm -hmm. most of them were upbeat positive fucking records and right. they said something now it's like the, the shit that was taboo to say like 20 years ago is like the shit you you know, gotta say, gotta say. It's kind of like it, like in the '90s and the t 2000s when the weed started popping. Right. Everybody had to talk about smoking the weed. Right. Right. Because you got validated by that. Yeah, the chronic changed the game. Yeah. Everybody had to really talk about weed. Right. Like, now it's like you know you got to be talking about like Zannies, like Zannies, like and fucking popping pills and all this other shit and sipping. You know. Right. Yeah. It's it. The, I, you know what it is. I think. Uh, because we all have, like, there used to be a time when, don't you remember where you couldn't call people because their area code? Yeah. It, it was going to cost. Your phone was bill yeah. was expensive. Yeah, communication. We don't, right now, yeah. we have instant communication around the world, so we all learn the same things really quick. Yeah. So what, whatever that thing that's trending that week, like, um, don't you remember when the, the chicks were doing, like, it was... The, for the dick and all the girls were doing this I had something for the dick and they had a beat and everything like yeah. that shit will trend like and be the biggest thing ever for like a week or two weeks and then, then there's the next thing and we all get it like I used to be able to tell be able to tell like a LA dude from a from a Long Beach dude from a Gardena dude now I can't tell yeah, an LA dude from an Atlanta dude from a New York dude from a dude in Europe or a Canadian dude everybody kind of yeah. It became uniform because the information gets there immediately to everybody. Yeah. Instead of it becoming something that you could share a style around the world. Right. There was just like, it's like yeah. instantaneous and a lot of the shit that's coming out is just I'm not bad at making hit records and club records. I get it. I think I I'm I'm a big fan of it. Yeah. You know, I can write we, we those need records too. Yeah. And we need those party records. Yeah. I just think balance. Like, yeah. you know, if, if we That's the thing. You just said it, right? Balance because now there's an imbalance. Now right. there's more of that. Way more. That it's like shit. 99%. Yeah. Party, do a million drugs, damn the consequences. <laughs> yeah. Trick, trick, give your money to, to, to the nearest stripper. I'm not mad at you strippers. Don't get mad at me. I'm just saying. I'm from L.A. We don't trick. They do it. They do it in <laughs> spurts. But they do yeah. it in spurts, you know, as, as, as opposed to the way, the way that it used to be done, right? Like you got homies like Kendrick. 
who out there who's out there flipping and right. saying like some dope shit. Yeah, with on, content and talking about real shit. Yeah. And J. Yeah. Cole and yeah, guys like that. Yeah. But like, you know, it's it's very slim. I, I, I call mean, it I call it like the Sith. It's like the ruler too. Yeah. They only let like two lyrical niggas kind of pop. It was like yeah. big Biggie and Jay. I mean right. big big um it, Big, Big and Pac. It was Big and Pac. Then they passed away. And then it was like Jay Z and Nas. And then it was, you know, it'll be like two. It's always like two, like the Sith. And now now it's J. Cole and Kendrick. Kendrick yeah. But meanwhile, you know, not taking nothing from them, but there's also like maybe, you know, 400 other talented oh, yeah. J. Cole's and Kendrick's that, that would love to get in there. But those there's only like two slots. And then everything else, 98%. Right. You know, how many drugs can I do on this record? Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and and you know the sad part is that does take a toll because you know your heart can't handle doing all the drugs. Yeah, you gotta do your drugs. Don't let your drugs do you. Yeah, you understand See that what I mean? part again. <laughs> that part. That part. <laughs> that part right there. Look at me as I get high and don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I love the show. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, let me ask you this, like, yes, because you 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 are one of those lyrical fucking. You know, wizards. Who who were some of the rappers that you were listening to early on that like, you know, inspired you? I'm a fan of everybody, honestly. Like, obviously, fan of y'all. Um, studied it, played it. You know what I mean? Um, first of all, just was a fan of of it. So, my my, there's nobody that over influences me because everybody influenced me. I just absorbed everything. Red Man, uh, Freestyle Fellowship, Ice Cube, Too Short, um, Scarface, uh, Rock Him, Nas. I, I think my favorite maybe might be. I don't. No, Karis One is my favorite rapper. Yeah, He's I my mean favorite. that's that's my favorite rapper. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's all, yeah. You know, for me, he he was doing history, and I didn't even, I didn't really think that could be done in music or yeah. in rap. And then he was gunning. And so, you know, he inspired me to think I could do it. I yeah. think, you know, not that I would be as, you know, ever be as good as him or even get to know him, which is great that he acknowledges me. But everybody else, man, it's just so many dope people, man. Uh, it was dope. I was watching Snoop play uh, Gonzo and Ice Cube. Yeah. Um, and I hadn't heard that record in like 10, 15 years. It's just like everybody's dope. It's a lot of dope people. Yeah. We just, you know, what we need is the, you know, the listeners to open your ear and not only like the chocolate cake because every day you got chocolate cake like nigga it's all kind of other cakes bro <laughs> try try some, some other kind of cake you never know you might like that one too try yeah. some different flavors <laughs> you know what i'm saying give it a shot hey but i'll say this yeah you know krs1 was definitely one who influenced a lot of us yeah it, you know it's a trip because I, you know I, I learned so much from that dude watching him get down from afar there was a couple things right there was one gig he did right here downtown off of uh, Ninth and something, maybe Ninth and San Pedro. It was called the Reed. It was. Okay. You remember that club? Mm -mm. It was. It was called the Reed. It was a hip hop club, and he was supposed to perform there. The sound system took a shit. They didn't have a stage. He got up on tables. Wow. He got up on tables and started rocking the set a acapella mic, just, acapella wow. going for it you know what i'm saying that's, so dope. that's and, and that a was master of, of ceremonies yeah master yeah. of ceremonies and there's somebody outside pedro um and uh, the other thing this was some random shit right so we're in new york um for one of the new music some new york yeah, music I remember, them. remember those yeah <laughs> and everybody's doing showcases you know you guys are signed already though you yeah we're, we're signed already we're doing showcases that mm -hmm. week and all this by then you know krs1 is already krs motherfucking yeah, one yeah, right yeah. um so we go to this gig that he's supposed to do right and we get there right before he gets there we're waiting in line to go in right nobody knows who we are so we're fucking waiting in line you know we're doing showcases like right, other right. up and coming artists so right. there's no vip treatment you're right. waiting in fucking line right paying your dues so this guy <laughs> rap god fucking rolls in on a tense beat oh, changes chains it up <laughs> goes in rocks the fuck out of the oh, building wow. Comes back hops out, on his hops on his 10 speed, 
kept it pushing. Into the wind, bro. That's amazing. That, that's hip hop. That's, like, that's some real hip hop shit. That's that's my KRS One story, dude. Yeah. That that's amazing. Word up, man. Um, what's your favorite collab you did? Because I mean, you were one of the guys that motherfuckers wanted to rap with. Uh, I don't have a favorite. Like honestly, I don't really listen to my music a lot. Yeah. Um. My favorites is producers. Right. Like, MCs, yeah. I'm so blessed to be able to rock with them. Yeah. I would say one of my favorites songs to be on, honestly, RZA, because I had a show in London. You know, it was my first time ever going out by myself to Europe. I got the show in London. It's right after uh, Solo Nights came out. Just, you know, I'm just like out of my element. I've been out with Exhibit before, but now I'm like, yo, I got to rock these, you know, 600 people for an hour and a half dolo. Yeah. I ain't got no help. And so I went and I do the show, you know, and like midway through my show, RZA runs out on stage with the mask on and does another hour with me. We just make up songs. That's crazy. And I'm just, you know, you know I'm brass cats. I'm nobody. That's fucking For him to crazy. take the time to come out and gun down That's and crazy. just rock with me. I wish I had that footage. It was, it was, you know, I'm a big fan of, you know, him. And literally to do that, hang out with me. And then, uh, like, a couple of days later, because, you know, I still, yeah, I was on tour. That was my first show. Right. Uh, Riz hits me, and I think he's in France. He's like, yo, yo, you know what I'm saying? Come up to the studio. I'm like, all right. So he rocked with me in London and then put me on the Bobby Digital album, in, in, in friends, like too. you know, Sick. so dope. That's one of my favorite experiences overall, like yeah, some Bardem stuff. Uh, but everybody's a blessing to rock with because everybody brings different energy, right? So, sitting in the, especially when you're sitting in the studio, half the time I write my raps from being around that other person because the they may say something, the vibe, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, that part is dope, yeah. I mean, fuck, you know, that that's that's how some of the fucking best lyrics are written, man, you know? Yeah, just, just that whole fucking vibe, the energy of flipping back and forth. Because, I mean, you know, these days, motherfuckers are, you know, set, you know, mailing verses back and yeah, I mean, forth. I, 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 like I'm that. guilty as charged. Me I too. too. I Me it. too. I mean, we all do it. But, yeah. I mean, as an artist. You want to get in there and, 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 yeah, get that vibe and catch, you know, because I'll just catch slang off of. Or maybe we did something that day. We went to the burger spot before, you know, right. whatever. Or, or somebody was arguing with their chick and said some dumb shit. Like, oh, that's the bar on the record. And right. it never wouldn't have happened without that energy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so when you're in the studio, like, what, what's the vibe like in there? Do you, like, have it with a bunch of people to see what the reactions are? Or do you just fucking, you know? No, honestly, uh, when I had, you know, when I was spending... Uh, the Beatles money, you know, uh, the, yeah. the major record deals. Yeah. What I would always, because I like to record early, like right. between like noon get and in, like four. I like to just get it in. So it would be like me and Seagal, you know, Seagal. Yes. What a fully yeah. Salute, yeah. Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, Seagal knew I'd, you know, I'd get in at like 12. And then, I, you know, your friends, especially back then when you got the big studio and the big budget. They come through. But they come in after work. So I knew I didn't have to worry about the homies. Uh, yeah. And then the homies that don't do nothing with life, that, you know. So you didn't have to be, you could, you could, I could work. Do both. You could work, not be distracted. And then the them homies come, come through at six. And then play the shit. And, and, and then get allow to me to get the, the reaction. That, yeah. That's, that's yeah. dope. Yeah. So that, that would be the way I use, well, back then I would work. Now it's a little bit different. I, I'll try to get all the ideas out dolo you know within the community of people but you know i'm working with sick jack and coming in so we get to play stuff and get yeah. reactions anyway so i catch the vibe from my homies that way let me ask you this because i know you've done a lot of fucking shows and you could relate to this right so your your original recording you fucking you know knock down that song Sometimes in shows you come up with something out of nowhere that can go on top or in a spot. Right. Does it make you fucking wish like, you know, it goes so good, right? right. Like a piece that you thought of that you didn't necessarily think of when you were recording you recorded it. it. And now it's too late. Now it's I just change late. them at the shows. Like I will switch out like bars like that are and then timely things. You know, if it's something timely, I'll, I'll, I'll flip it through. But yeah, it always happens because... We're perfectionists. Right. We're trying to make it the best. And then anytime you get to stand away from something, you still see that one little, you know. Right. Yeah. Do, do you think that sometimes, like, let's just say before the songs come out, 
or b before you finish recording them, you go fucking add them to your set and see what you come up with just spontaneously and then i mean yeah. i know i know metal bands do that shit yeah. they play their fucking songs live you know they rehearse it rehearse it they go play it live and then they might come up with something that wasn't in the in the original right. idea and, and they, they go back and then they go back and record it I, I'm I'm a quitter. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> <laughs> but I, but but that does happen. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, like there, there there's been a couple times where where we've done that. Like for with, mm. with uh, I believe it was uh, maybe Temples of Boom. Mm. We were playing that album for people before it came out, and they didn't know. They, and didn't, they were getting that real they, reaction. Yeah, they didn't know what the fuck that was, That's, but we were they were getting a good reaction from it. But we were taking cadences from that that we were that we hadn't recorded, right. Right? and then going back and oh, yeah, yeah of course. and then figuring out you know what to use that maybe it is not going to go on mm -hmm. Temple Boo, but maybe it was on you know something we used on the songs. It's a trip how that happens. I mean that's a dope process when you can actually do that and and interact. I, I actually just watched. Uh, I was on tour with Exhibit. Um, uh, West Coast Takeover, takeover. Right yeah, there. man. Thanks for having me out there, brother. Oh, but uh, I was watching. He had this song with Problem, and uh, the record's not out yet. And you know, but we got you know twenty seven days, and they were rock the record's a great record. I was like, I just watched natural fan response. I took my own personal as an MC, analytically as a you know musician. Like I thought the record was dope, but right. then I knew like you knew when you like, saw the I, response. With that, I'm everywhere. I was just like, <clears throat> you got a great record, you know. So. Yeah. And, and if and I, you know, the record ain't out yet still. You know, I just watched some of their intonations when they were performing it live that maybe they'll go back and even update it because yeah, that could, live yeah. version was a, was killer. You know, it's because it's always good to record your set because if you don't remember what you did, you can always fucking go back to the playbook and right. say, okay, what did we do here? Because we did something and then fucking like, boom, all right, that's what we did. Let's go fucking try this in the studio or add it or whatever that's the cool shit you know but sometimes i think as 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 artists we don't want to take a chance and put the song out there and then it doesn't like fucking either it doesn't pop or someone takes the idea before we fucking right, actually do it right but i think i think sometimes it's necessary to take the chance because you do come up with those right. other ideas when you're in the fucking moment yeah you know because in the studio you're comfortable you got your fucking idea Right. locked in right whereas live something might just pop up out right. of spontaneity i mean you know i want to change half my albums i ever made just from doing them live because i just hear all these it's like yeah that intonation or the time in there or too many bars or you know what I mean or i should have went this direction so yeah what's cool is you know when you do those those 20 year remasters you can always go back, back and tweak them right there and make it slightly different you know what i want to do i want to do one of those uh a few MCs have done it. Just live band album version yeah. of something. I've, I've never done that. I've, I've rocked with, with live band a few times, uh, but I've never really recorded records with a live right. band, so I, I, I'd like to do that. That would be dope. Like Al Michaels Affair. You ever hear them? They do all the Wu-Tang. Mm -mm, I'm not hip. Oh, I got you. I'll hit you later. They're dope? Yeah. What band would, would you use? I mean, because a lot of people would automatically go to the roots for that. Well, I mean, that's kind of the go-to. They got the right. greatest job in fucking <laughs> rap right now, ever. And, yeah, and the salute. best job ever created in yeah, rap. Them niggas got the it. Homies, yeah. yeah, for real. Um, I don't know, man. I I, uh, I saw Kwali rock with. Uh, it wasn't a jazz band. It was this other kind of form of. It wasn't big band or whatever. But that was an interest. It was like more Louisiana, and I yeah. forgot they call it something else, whatever. But I would like to try that. I think reggae. I don't know because you don't know yeah, how your yeah. delivery would change based on if it was rock shit, if it right. was jazz shit. So it doesn't really matter. Just like an ill band. Yeah. Would you go more more uh, like a hip hop R and B style on it? Like I, 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 I think I would try to go a, uh, a little more aggressive. I think a lot of times I picked laid back records jazz with oh, it. jazz Word. would be cool too yeah oh, i mean yeah, there's so it. many directions you can go though right. with the band you know right and, and do you got any plans to you know put that together soon yeah I'm, um i would love to do a 25th anniversary 
of my first album, Solo Nice. So technically, Solo Nice 2, which is out on all platforms, uh, is celebrating the 25th anniversary, but the record came out in 1996. So 2001 or 2002, which would be the, the, the actual anniversary for that one. Um, yeah, it'd be dope to try to try to do a band to that and celebrate that first experience, you know. Um, we'll see, if, if I'm lucky. I mean, that would be a dope fucking project right there, bro. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I think I dropped my other fucking joint. God damn it. Uh, there it goes. Hello. <laughs> Hello, I got it right here. Ah. It fell, oh, into, well, it, well, fell well. In, it fell into the hands. It looks like... <laughs> <laughs> Don't tax me. Hand I had over. just finished my joint too. Uh, <laughs> I might have an extra one in there for you. Oh, oh there man, y'all got a million. Damn. <laughs> Damn, an extra one means four. <laughs> wow. Here you go. Oh, thanks for the Aton joint. Aton <laughs> joint? That ain't no Aton joint, yeah. dog. Where is oh, man. Time, if, if there, like, if there was a. Uh, a collaboration you'd like to do, what who would it be with that you haven't rocked with yet? Oh man, I don't want to, I don't want the political answer, but I actually gen, I genuinely mean it. Like, I like rocking, I like the experience of because I don't, okay, fuck it, I'll go with rock him then. Rock I was gonna him. do a long political answer, but fuck it, rock him, yeah, man. I mean, that's rock him, that's rock him. I mean, uh. But then Kane too. I'm a big fan. I'm, see, see, you know. see that I'm saying that that's why I I think your lyrical prowess is fucking where it's at because of who you listened to in those early days. Because I mean, those, those were cats that I listened to too. Kane, yeah, his flow was just ridiculous. I just seen him perform at A3C in Atlanta like a month and a half ago. Murdered it. Killed it. Like these young cats, like, and even dudes, you know, from my era, like. I, you know, I don't do the greatest show. I, some people really do really dope ass shows. Kane just, I don't know, for me as a, you know, on the lyrical side, because it's not like he has a hype man or nothing. Kane kills he it. Kills He's it. notorious for killing the yeah, shows. His, his fucking, his uh, cadences and his fucking styles. Yeah. And then moving around the way he does, because oh, yeah. like he doesn't just stay still. He fucking does all them dance moves still. Yeah, bro, he kills and it. He he kills. Just, he's just very, in it. like uh, he said he studied, uh, it's like the 60s dude. So that's yeah. why it's like real, like the Mac is playerish, but then it's still lyrical, then it's knowledge itself. So, and, and him and Chris, to me, like when I, I, you know, when I think about a lyrical MC show, they kill it for they me. They kill it for they sure. They kill it, yeah. So, but yeah, I think Rock Him or Kane, man. I, you know, I'd love to. I'd love to do a song with Rock Him and Kane, produced by DJ Premier mm. and Dr. Dre. Ooh. <laughs> that's that's what I would yeah. want. Just put that in the air right now. See, we Damn. just just put that in the air. I feel like you know? that could be. That, I, that, I'm fan of, with, with Slick Rick on the hooks. Oh man! Oh shit! That brought it over the top. <laughs> then it get wavy a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's about all you need. Right there. <laughs> Shit. That's amazing. That would be dope, though. That'd be really fucking dope. I mean, because... You've fucking... been able to do all your dream. Uh, uh, Oddly enough, you know, I, I thought about that a year back. You know, like, uh -huh. I, I thought about it, you know, because I, I thought, fuck, man, I got a lot of collabs, but... Then I started thinking about, and then started seeing them because now you know with Instagram everybody starts mm -hmm. posting shit they hadn't seen before or right. hidden gems like right. that type of shit, right? And then I start fucking seeing them, and I'm like, damn, you know, I actually got to rap with some of my fucking idols, you know, Man, like I, I, that's an amazing feeling, brother. Like with, like obviously with Dre and KRS One. Like off the top with that what with that group therapy shit. Exactly. Nas is on it and RBX mm -hmm. and myself and and uh, KRS One and and I you know I was I wasn't. What's your, what was your favorite collab? Fuck, I don't know. That's a good one. Uh, that that was that was probably one of them right there, man. That group therapy shit because I mean that 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 track, was the beginning of aftermath. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I mean that. Yeah. I, I didn't expect to get invited to some shit like that, you know what I mean? But they 
they let me in, so I went and did my and body it. Thing. Nah, that was, <laughs> man, I love that wreck. But, but yeah, I mean that that was probably it right there. Cause I mean, fuck, you know, KRS One was like the you know. Obviously, yeah. our idols, man. We yeah. were yes. watching him, so to, to to get on a track with him. But I'll tell you what, getting on with Chuck in the Prophets of Rage, oh. that was big too. Because man. I mean, Chuck in 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 um in fucking Chris were, they were the two that was constantly getting run in, in our whips, man. Whenever so we dope. rolled anywhere before before them, it was Run DMC. <laughs> but when they came in, it was, you know, yeah, yeah, it man. was that, yeah. Man. yeah. So to be able to rock with those two, it was crazy, you know. That, that's dope. Yeah. Uh, then y'all just finished y'all toured recently, right? Yeah, we just we well shit. I've been home for how long now? A few months. Few months. We've been knocking down these smoke boxes and shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I was on a run for like you know two three years, like fucking consistently, but not 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 in one shot. You know, right. I was going out for like three months. Or, or two months and coming back for a month and, right. you know, that whole run. But not doing it like we used to do in the fucking 90s, like going out for six months and then coming back for a week and then going back out for another. You, we were fucking doing that shit like crazy. That, man. I think I just got to. <laughs> <Yeah, we're laughs> now we're hot. Now. Now we're, hey, like. What what do you like? How do you feel about the fucking cannabis culture in in, in California? I mean, because you've seen it. I, I grew up in day it. One. You I grew, grew up, up in it. it. Yeah, I grew up in it with it. Um, I just was always the the drinker, but I I, I was never. Every time I would smoke, I would smoke once every like every four years. Yeah, and then yeah. I'd be like, I always do it with one of my friends, but I'm like. I'm not, you can't take me out in public because if I get high, then I'll be high and, and goofy, right? But, uh, uh, let's see. <laughs> Fuck, see, I just got high again. I <laughs> talk myself in this fucking circle. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, you know, hey, that's, that's the cool thing about it, man. You know, you can just forget about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, forget about it. Forget about it. Word up, man. You know, California and the flavors, man. That's what happens. Yep. Word up. You got any shows coming up? Uh, not right now. I'm just working on uh, promoting the, the, the album with the book. Yeah. Um, That's right. You, yeah. you dropped the so book. On Ice too. Yeah, so, so On Ice 2. So On Ice 2. Really appreciative to everybody that helped me put it together, Patchworks and them. So uh, no shows up until... Because I just came back with Exhibit. From, right. from, yeah, that's uh, right. You were out there with the Exhibit. Yeah, yeah, from the West Coast Takeover. Yeah. So that's cool. we, we did a, you know, basically a month run uh, up in Europe. It was great. He had it sold out. It was, it was dope. And uh, so now I'm back, we may repress the book again. Yeah. And then uh, I, if, if we do a lyrical takeover run with Exhibit, then I may do that. But that'll be like February. I'm, I'm kind of studio writing right now. That's dope. dope. Yeah. Well, that's cool because you could actually put out some some music to go with the book too, right? Well, I got the whole album. Oh, the, the whole album, the album yeah. is a lyric book. Yeah. yeah oh, so, okay. Yeah. So, Solo Nights too. I got to get you a copy. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, the record's been out uh, for about a month, so that's why I was dope. To, well, not a little bit more than that. Uh, month and a half. So that's why I was dope to go out promote the album yeah. with 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 X. But uh. Yeah, no, nah, it's a it's a dope album. Solo Nights too. It's uh, twenty five years basically since the first album. Uh, you know, I feel like everybody came to the table and blessed me. Um, as far as production, uh, Pete Rock, Diamond D. It couldn't be Solo Nights too without Diamond D. Damn, Diamond blessed me. Um, he uh, he was one of the dope boys oh, too. Are you, are you still killing he's it, man? Still, still got beats. Yeah, he's still, still got beats, yeah. man. Like I, I feel like he was up there with Pete Rock and in in in, um, in pre premiere. Oh, yeah. and, they're all incredible. Yeah, they're all incredible. And he he blessed me. Uh, Justice League. I want to shout them out. They blessed me. Uh, you you got it. Oh, shit. I wish we could play this shit right now. <laughs> you know what? And the ones coming. The, 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 watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. set it up, man, because I've been wanting to do that. So you know, in the boxes to come. The next time you in, we're gonna play some okay, shit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. Not. Um, Everybody out there, definitely on our platform, Solar Nights 2. 
uh, we got CeeLo Green on the record, Snoop oh, no Dogg. Uh, uh, I don't want to forget everybody. See, that's, that's dope. That's that, see, that's what I'm saying. That motherfuckers got love for you like that. That you know, motherfuckers yeah, show up. Yeah, they show yeah. up and, and bring their A game. So I'm Hell thankful yeah. to everybody. Hell yeah. And, Yo, I gotta get one, chill out one of these days, sir. I'm please. down. You know, any t- you know what? We'll talk about stuff. I I got a I got a fucking uh, album that I'm working on with Psycho Less. We got to get on something there. You heard? I it right may or here. may not have heard about that. You heard about <laughs> it right here, and uh, you know we got to get on something right. I there. I would love to, man. Hell I, yeah! Appreciate you, B. Word up. Hey, thank you for thanks for you having know, me. Jumping in the box. I know you normally don't smoke like that. But hey, he fucking killed the Are joint. You high? I'm high as fuck. <laughs> Let him know where to find you. Oh, Instagram at R A S underscore K A S S. So that's pretty much for everything. Word up, man. Leave comments, subscribe to the channel. Fuck with my man Raz Kaz. Keep smoking. Solo nice too. Let's get this. They say I'm psycho. I move weight like lipo. Got a big crib like Michael. Out the window with a rifle. My wrist game on light show. I'm backstage with white hoes. I got-